So I know you're involved with Flip the Pharmacy, and a lot of what Flip the Pharmacy is geared to do is really help some of those pharmacies go from kind of operationally, I count by fives, drop pills in a bottle and run away, to really kind of becoming the next step of a clinical service. Uh, can you kind of describe what you've been doing in your area of Flip the Pharmacy? Yeah, yeah. So I am the team lead for Team Utah with Flip the Pharmacy. We've got 19 stores um, that are participating. Um, something like half of them are Pioneer stores. The other half use uh, Ryler vendors. Um, and uh, so what What we're... Um, like the, the, so, last night I was uh, down in Utah Valley visiting three other pharmacies that are participating, um, and so I coached them on this month's change package, which for Flip the Pharmacy, like th these are not secret. You can find them online. If, even if you're not participating, you can follow along with Flip the Pharmacy. Okay. Um, I mean, it's all it's all on flipthepharmacy.com. There's no secrets here. Um, the concept is to flip the entire industry's model, not just the 500 stores that are participating, right? Right. Um, and so, anyway, so last night I went down to these three stores and um, went through this month's change package, which is just basically saying, hey, when you're, as you're checking people's prescriptions, go and check also their immunization registry. Like, each state has their immunization registry that shows what immunizations each person's got gotten. So um, go and check the registry for folks and see if they've gotten their shingles shot and their pneumonia shot and their tetanus shot and their flu shot. And if they haven't, talk to them about it and give it to right. them. And then the thing that Flip the Pharmacy does differently than um, prior models like this is that we document what we're doing in the pharmacist's e-care plan. And then that gives us a, like, in the aggregate across these hundreds of pharmacies that are participating, that gives us, like, some population health level information right. of, like, look, these pharmacies are intervening hundreds of thousands of times, and they're doing this kind of intervention at all of these different places. Um, and so, like, pr previous... Um, Previous grants and stuff like this have like shown that you know if a pharmacy is like the Asheville project, if a pharmacy is involved in caring for patients with diabetes and high blood pressure, and is like involved in the care team and is incentivized to do so, they can drop the total cost of care for employers by just this enormous amount. Right. Like we're, we're talking like I think something like. 80% of, of people in the Asheville project saw their ANCs drop. And by a, like every, in every visit, the A1C was going down. Like th th that's unheard of kind of uh, results. But that was like 20 years ago and pharmacists still aren't doing that. Wow. And it's because it, it, it didn't scale easily. Um, where what Flip the Pharmacy is trying to do is just, we know these things work. We just want to implement them at scale right. in pharmacies across the country and then make sure that the pharmacies are documenting in a structured format that's legible to payers so that they can see the benefits of what we're doing without having to do a lot of manual data gathering. Right. And, and what you said there is really key of the structured piece, right? That's where one of those areas where it's been this big gap. And, you know, I always point to email as being kind of your your gold standard of that. You can send an email across the planet and it doesn't matter what continent you're on, what language you speak, the structure is the same and you can read it, you can do whatever you want to with it. And healthcare data has been historically terrible at that. And the eCare plan allows you, you know, we're sending things by ICD-10 codes and SNOMED codes and LINK codes. And all that just means on the end is a pharmacist can share that with literally anybody and speak the same language. Yeah. Yeah. One of the really cool things is that the eCare plan is on, on fire, right? The, the fast healthcare interoperability response. Um, so that means that any other system that, um, 
like any other system that uses fire can just take components of the care plan and suck it into the appropriate section of their um, of their EHR or of their whatever the insurance companies use as their databases. Um, but the, like fire is is a growing industry standard, and so since it since th this is like e each of the segments is is written in fire, they can they can just suck out the appropriate elements into the appropriate elements of their um, of their chart, basically. And so you can share information so much e more easily than um, than you could, you know, 20 years ago. Right. And one of the things that we recently did that I know you're excited about because I, I got the issue that you submitted that we did it off of, you know, like one of the things that we've constantly seen change is now when the new e-prescription standard, you can send over a ton of information. And part of that was vital signs, right? So now you can get height, weight, blood pressure. Um, so we recently pulled that into Pioneer as a whole, and that then automatically gets added to the e-care plan, right? So you, you see this constant feedback loop of being able to consume and share information in a way that would have taken, you know, a, a couple of faxes, maybe a phone call before to get that information that's now just there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was I was really pleased when I was uh, visiting a pharmacy last night. Um, they had no idea what I was talking about when I said that vital signs were there. But when I asked to pull up a patient chart and look in the lab tab, sure enough, there it was. Um, because it, you know, this is Pioneer Store. And so they had like six months trending data of, of the patient's weight and height, um, which the heights hopefully doesn't really have a trend. Yeah, um, yeah there, is. <laughs> there is. There's a different problem. They, they tend to trend up in young people and down right. in older people. Right, right, right. Okay. Noted. Yeah, but not over six months yeah. usually, at least in older people. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, unless, uh, unless you had some kind of very traumatic event. You'd see a pretty quick trend right, there. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a quick <laughs> trend. Um, well, you know, it's funny. In my uh, my grandma was a diabetic uh, before she died a few years ago, and she was really excited because she called and she said, "I lost fifty pounds," and I was like, "That's great." She had a below the knee amputation, That's, and that she's was so I funny. was like, "Oh, come on." She's funny. All right, <laughs> I love her. Um, so so in the what's in it for me? Um, here, like this is gonna be uh, this. Uh, Treat me like a dumb person for a second. Well, not that you don't already, Josh. Um, <laughs> so so I, I hear Flip the Pharmacy. I'm, I'm not as involved with it as Josh is, uh, clearly, in, in our in our company. Is, is a little bit of it is, it's, I know it's a grant program, correct, right? And, and it's, and it's let's, let's demonstrate in a scaled way, like Benjamin said, the impact we're having and that's kind of like the ultimate white paper to go hang around and, mm -hmm. and, and, and show to health plans or, or project, whatever, like the results of this is kind of like the ultimate white paper presentation to go, you need to spend money on this. Right. Is, is, that, is that where, am I right? Yeah. I mean, the, the big part about it is, and the thing that I like about Flip the Pharmacy is you have people like Benjamin going out and talking to other pharmacies and sharing what they do. A lot of these have historically been kind of, you know, um, a pharmacy school professor is going to go out and tell people and, you know, it'd be like me going out in the world and telling somebody how to run their business. I don't own a pharmacy, so I may know how to do it, but the credibility is not there. So a lot of the flip the pharmacy coaches are actual, they've done it, they've succeeded in it, and now they're going out to show other people. And it's really about operational planning, right? They're getting more efficient so that they can do the operations, and then go out and actually add the clinical services. Because if you just jump straight into care planning without knowing how to run your pharmacy, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We've seen that over and over again.